Hello everyone, this is the KMN 1971, back on that track with another comic stack. Go figure, right? I hope you're all having a great weekend out there. This is my like third or fourth attempt at trying to uh, shoot this video, so hopefully fourth time is a charm. Starting off, I have the Lazarus contract that ran through the Titans, Teen Titans, and Death Deathstroke series. And um, this is just another example of those little mini self-contained events that have been running through uh, throughout DC Rebirth uh, w within the tradition of Justice League vs. Suicide Squad, Superman Reborn, The Button, The Lazarus Contract is uh, the latest in those um, mini events that I've been pretty much a, a pretty good fan of. I, th I think they've been really good. So um, how did this one stack up? Uh, well, to be honest, while I did enjoy it, I was hoping it hoping for it to be, pun intended, a bit more eventful. Because as readers, this was the first time that we get to see um, Deathstroke interact with the Titans under the DC Universe Rebirth continuity. And I was just, I guess I had my expectations a bit too high. And um, it left me wanting a little bit more. But it was still pretty good. It was a fun story arc. And um, I, I wish I could get it all in one shot because um, as you all, well, as some of you may have known, uh, I am a big fan of connecting covers, and this is uh, four connecting covers done by one of my all-time favorite Titans artists, Mike McCone. So, pretty good. So here's parts one and two in Titans number 11 and Teen Titans number eight. Deathstroke number 19, number part three. And Teen Titans special, part four. So... It was pretty good. Like I said, I, I would recommend it. And as a old school Titans fan from the Marv Wolfman, George Perez classic Titans, and um, obviously the creators of Deathstroke, this was a crossover um, right up my alley. So pretty cool. Another example of a, a cool DC Rebirth B cover. This is Action Comics number 980, and this is pretty much, uh, this was the last issue in my area, so it sold out in three of uh, three of my uh, comic book shops. So, uh, I don't know if it sold out on Midtown as of yet, but who knows, just keep your eye out for it. And uh, Suicide Squad is on my regular pull list, and I believe that it is going to be crossing over with Action Comics um, for the next couple of issues. So it was cool to be able to pick this up. And I picked it up a week late. I spaced out picking it up last week. So I was very happy to be able to pick it up this week. Yeah, Exo Man of War from Free Comic Book Day. I guess this comic kind of makes me a, a bit of a liar because the only book that I really wanted on Free Comic Book Day was uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy Free Comic. And um, at one of the shops that I go to, they keep on, well, uh, with every purchase, they throw in a free comic book from Free Comic Book Day at random. And this was in my stack from last week. I gave it a read, and it was really good. Um, I, I'm a fan of the XO character to begin with. so um, But I haven't really kept up with them since like early 90s. So a lot has happened. But uh, I did like the, the story. I like the art. I like the coloring. So uh, I might have to take Gary J's uh, uh, recommendation and uh, check out, get off my butt and check out this new XO Man of War series. It seems really good. All right, so that will do it for the current stuff. X-Men, the Messiah Complex, Chapter 1, Mont Silvestri variant cover. I ended up running across a set of this for, I want to say it was like 16 bucks. So $16 for 13 issues. Pretty cool. Ever since Logan dropped and X-Men Prime and Gold have happened. It's kind of rekindled my optimism and my hunger for X-Men comics. As you know, I've been collecting X-Men comics right along. It's one of my all-time favorite franchises. But over the past, like, three or four years, Marvel has pretty much crapped on the X-Men franchise. And uh, the last, like, real X-Men eccentric storyline that I was reading was A vs. X back then. So it's been a while. But with, uh, like I said, between the Logan movie... Uh, X-Men Prime and Gold and the X-Men franchise going through a quote-unquote rebirth themselves, uh, so to speak. Um, I've been really psyched about uh, the X-Men franchise. So when the Messiah Complex originally came out, I was only purchasing Astonishing X-Men and Uncanny X-Men, and uh, I was not into buying any kind of uh, line-wide crossovers. But um, see, now that I have some rekindled X-Fever, 
I wanted to check this out, mainly for a couple of reasons. One, to read the, the complete story. I only had the, the bookends of the story and the Uncanny X-Men tie-ins. And uh, I wanted the first appearance of Hope Summers as a baby. And somewhere during the story arc, they do end up revamping the X-Force franchise. So I wanted that also. So for $16, I figured it was a pretty good pickup for, um, for an ex-geek such as myself. So X-Men Messiah Complex Chapter 1, Sylvester Variant. Uncanny X-Men 492. X-Factor 25. New X-Men 44. X-Men 205, the first appearance of Hope Summers as a baby. Uncanny X-Men 493. X-Factor number 26, which might be the, the revamped version of X-Force, I'm not sure. X-Men number 45, X-23 versus Lady Deathstrike, sign me up. X-Men 206, X-Men 494, X-Factor 27, New X-Men number 46. And the final chapter, chapter 13, in X-Men 207, which was pretty cool. And one thing I did not know is that the Messiah Complex also came with these two little supplement comics. X-Men the Messiah Complex, Mutant Files, and... X-Men Messiah Complex Marvel Spotlight. Now, if I was just buying those off the rack, I probably wouldn't have picked them up. But, um, so for 15 bucks, I mean, uh, 15 comics, turns out, for $16, that's a pretty good deal. Looking forward to reading that story in its entirety now. And to end off the, the X, X-Men oriented part of the, the video, we have X-23 number one from um, her first ongoing miniseries. And re really happy to pick this up. I picked this up at a real reasonable price on Amazon of all places. Yes, I'm still nipping away at that Amazon voucher that I ended up getting from work. And uh, while this was really cool, I bought, I, I mean, for, for the condition and the price, I was really happy, especially seeing that, considering that we're in the middle of X-23 mania right now. And uh, I was really happy with that, but man, Amazon is still such a pain. I also attempted to buy a copy of Magnus Robot Fighter number zero, and um, when it was sent to me, it did not have the collector's card, even though it was advertised as new. So I ended up sending it back to the seller, ended up getting a refund. Uh, the next time I tried to buy it, I actually contacted the seller prior to purchasing it to make sure that it had the card in it, and it didn't. So when I went back to look for it again the third time, I noticed the first seller that I had originally purchased it from had just relisted their book. After they pleaded ignorance, saying, oh, we had no idea that I had a collector's card, they relisted the book, same price, still listed as new. So just be very careful if you're um, shopping on the Amazon for comics. Uh, I would stick to modern comics when it comes to Amazon because, I don't know, the sellers on Amazon are just not the same caliber as the sellers on eBay, unfortunately. But, hey, it is what it is. But if you do, you know, your homework and have a little look on your side. You can still find some pretty good deals on Amazon. So X-23, number one, from our first ongoing, I mean, excuse me, our first miniseries. Another Amazon purchase and shifting gears into the sword and sorcery section of this video. Conan, number 29, from his uh, Dark Horse, his first Dark Horse ongoing series. This was a great series, classic stuff. Uh, Kicked off with Kurt Busiak on writing and Carrie Nord on art, and it is just a great, great, um, great modern comic volume. One of my favorites. Ran for 50 issues. I have about 30 of them right now, and it's definitely a volume that I seek to, uh, that I'm going to seek out to complete. This and all of them are fairly easy to come by and very cheap. This issue, however, is kind of tough. For uh, after Kurt Busiak left as the regular uh, um, writer for the series. Mike Mignola did a, a little three-part story arc, 
and for those three issues had Mike Mignola variant covers. So Mike Mignola drawing Conan, I'm not sure if he ever has, but I want to see it. So this is the, the first issue of that arc, number 29, that features a Mike Mignola variant cover. Mike Mignola and Conan, beautiful. Very happy to pick that up. Here is the first book that I'm going to say in this haul that I had no idea existed, but as soon as I saw it, I had to give it a home. Marvel featured number seven, Conan the Barbarian versus Red Sonja. Are you kidding me? How could I, as a comic book collector, put that one back in the long box and leave it at the store? Couldn't do it. So, picked it up. I want to say it was only like five bucks. So, definitely. Uh, and it uh, continues into a, another issue of Conan the Barbarian that I'll have to search out. But Conan versus Red Sonja. Yes. Yes, please. And when I picked that up, I also picked this up. Marvel feature number one featuring Red Sonja. Uh, and I want to say that this might be the first Red Sonja solo title. I'm not sure. I'll have to do a little bit more research. But um, I didn't even really know about the Marvel feature title. I, I'm familiar with, um, you know, Marvel preview. I'm familiar with Marvel spotlight. But Marvel feature, I wasn't... Um, yeah, I, I wasn't aware of this volume of Marvel feature. But I'm happy about it. Five bucks, a nice Bronze Age first issue, and uh, I would say fine plus condition. Cool. Now, from the state, that is from the same store that I've been nibbling away at a collection that, that uh, the owner of the store bought from somebody. And uh, I guess he's been buying smaller increments from this, uh, from this collector also. So this collection just keeps on giving and giving. <laughs> so it, it's cool. So, the same day that I picked up that Red Sonja stuff, I guess I was in a feeling a sword and sorcery vibe, so I picked up Cull the Conqueror, number one, for $10. Not a book that was on my list, but I figured another creation from Robert E. Howard, why not pick it up? I've always, I'm not a fan of Cull the Conqueror, to be honest with you. I've always viewed him as like a poor man's Conan, but for 10 bucks, a nice Bronze Age premiere issue. Yeah, I picked it up. Why not? Not much more I can say about Cull. And the same day, these were the books that I were that I was happy about that really tied in the sword and sorcery theme. Now I already own both copies of these, uh, copies of both of these rather, but they are fine and fine minus respectively. So I stumbled across these while I was looking like that collection. He has it basically set aside from the rest of his stuff in his store in two little short boxes. So I'm flipping through there, and I'm like, oh my god, look at these. Look at the colors popping on these. Such high grade. So I'm a I'm the type of collector that I would rather buy something that I don't own rather than upgrading um, if I have the choice, even though I do upgrade when I have the opportunity, definitely. But um, I could not risk these not being there again uh, the, the following week. So instead of buying something new, I definitely upgraded. And these books are beautiful, man. I mean, Conan number 23, I would say this is um, very fine plus. The only thing that I found wrong with it is in the, the back cover on the top uh, corner, there is a water stain. So that would probably bring it down to a very fine. But these books don't have any indentations, no impact marks, no spine ticks, no dog ears, no creasing. They're just straight up beautiful. Number 24, I would say, is just straight up very fine plus to near mint minus which I, I never really go near mint minus especially when it comes to bronze age issues that are, are this old but could not pass these up very happy to pick them up um just for those that are not in the know conan number 23 is the first appearance of red sonya and conan number 24 is uh, advertised as the first red sonya story so um beautiful stuff very happy to pick these up and uh be able to upgrade them in the pc Tomb of Dracula, number 53, A Little Marvel Bronze Age Horror. It's been a while. Now, this was a book also from uh, from my childhood. It wasn't part of that collection. From the same store, though. And when I was just fumbling around through his long boxes, I came across this for $5. Um, fine condition, straight up fine. It does have a little cover uh, dog ear at the bottom uh, that breaks color. But other than that, the book is in beautiful condition. And for $5, I couldn't turn it away. Uh, it's been, obviously decades since I've read this comic, 
But um, I want to say it's the first appearance of somebody. Maybe Hannibal King? I'm not sure. I should have uh, looked it up before shooting the video. But, you know, I'm lazy. At times. Another example of a book that I didn't know existed, but I geeked out as soon as I saw it. The Frankenstein Monster, number eight. Frankenstein meets Dracula. Dracula versus Frankenstein, done in the mighty Marvel Bronze Age manner. Are you kidding me? Sign me up, man. So this book was only seven bucks, at, also at that same shop, and I was stoked to pick this up, especially when I opened it up and I realized that while I was a little disappointed that it wasn't uh, drawn by um, Plug, but I mean, I, I can't be that disappointed because it was drawn by, um, it turned out it was drawn by John Bushima. So, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And speaking of Dracula, The Tomb of Dracula, number one. Now, after volume one of Tomb of Dracula was canceled, they ended up replacing it with this uh, black and white um, format magazine. And uh, they also tried to implement more adult themes, um, some nudity. <laughs> so, uh, great magazine. It only, but I guess, um, I don't know, maybe they were trying to go after a more adult demographic, but it apparently didn't work because this magazine only ran for about six issues before it was canceled. Nevertheless, I would like to collect the volume and add it into my um, Tomb of Dracula collection. So, very cool. A book that's very hard to um, come across in a, in a high grade because of this tough black cover. I have... Uh, Seen it around town a couple of times, but it's always banged up and they want, you know, a premium for it. I ended up picking this up for like, I don't know, maybe $16, $17 on eBay in very fine near minus condition. And I was very happy about it. And ending it off with the pick of the week. The Monster of Frankenstein, number one. Fire bad. Plugar, Beautiful. Love this book. Love it. Uh, once again, I would say this is phew, at least a very fine plus plus, maybe near minus, super high grade. I have never seen this book out in the wild. So <laughs> as soon as I stumbled across it, it was coming home with me, man. Beautiful. I mean, look at this. Kind of tough to tell with the glare, but oh, it's just beautiful. No spine ticks, no dog ears, no chipping. This is from early Bronze Age, man. And it's Frankenstein drawn by Plug. Come on. So I was very happy to pick this up because this was another one of my side uh, side quests, kind of like the Millennium uh, Foil Editions. I wanted to complete my Marvel Trinity of classic monsters uh, from the Marvel Bronze Age. So we have the Monster of Frankenstein, Werewolf by Night, and Tomb of Dracula. So I have all the premier issues of the classic monsters from the, the Marvel Bronze Age which I am super happy about, man. Super happy. It took me a while to be able to uh, acquire the, the three of these at, at a reasonable price. So, once again, very happy. I, like I have said before, I don't know what the, the drawer is, but there is definitely um, a market for this Marvel Bronze Age horror stuff. And I'm, I'm very cool with that. So, I just want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for commenting, liking, all that stuff. And... Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. I just eclipsed 300 subscribers, which I am very, very happy and humbled about. Um, I just started shooting videos, I think it was last September, and um, as a guy that's on the wrong side of 40, that a lot of times I'm not posting um, trendy stuff. I'm not one of those guys that chases variants. Not that I'm dogging anyone that does. I mean, always collect what you like to collect, period. And uh, that's... but. <laughs> along that philosophy, that's what I do. So I have to understand that, kind of like music. If you're listening to classic classic rock, a lot of uh, people of today are not listening to rock at all. So you're reaching out to a smaller audience. But with that said, I'm very humbled. I know there's people on here that have like a lot more than 300 to su subscribers, but in my view, I'm very humbled and very happy to be able to accrue 300 subscribers that just like to watch me geek out and ramble about comics on a weekly basis. So thank you very much for watching. I am humbled. I'm happy. And uh, I'm stoked about that. So thank you all. Have a great weekend. Be safe out there. And I will see you all next week. Take care.